I am 16, eating breakfast with my father, each of us reading a section of the New York Times. My father reads about Nazi hunters in Argentina. I read the sports scores. Before you die, what's one headline you want to see on the front page of the paper, I ask my father. Without hesitation, he answers, Israelis and Palestinians make peace. I knew you were going to answer something about Israel, I say. Something for once not about Israel. What about something that could be on the front of the science and technology section? And so he thinks for a second. And as he answers, he uses his hands to envision the headline in bold black ink letters with a comma he can't help add before a clause he can't help include. I've got it, he says. Cancer cured. Israeli scientists lauded. <laughs> I am 18. I have permission for my Israel trip leaders to spend the day with my Israeli family. I've never met Aunt Edna, but since I've been in Israel, she's called me every day to remind me to wear sunscreen. We plan to meet at a junction right outside the kibbutz my group is on. Right on time, a car pulls up, and out of the back seat, an older woman walks, walks out and waves goodbye to the driver. I run to the woman and throw my arms around her, and the half-biblical, half-slang Hebrew I know from Torah services and teenage soldiers, I let her know that I am wearing sunscreen. But she is stiff in my embrace, doesn't hug me back, doesn't respond to me as I tell her how good it is to finally meet her. From the driver's seat, Aunt Edna rolls down the window and shouts at me, New, get in. You're hugging the hitchhiker. She's not related to you. <laughs> I am 20. My Israeli friends don't get why I'm enrolling for a year at a yeshiva in Jerusalem. I'm not sure I do either. I sit down on the 21 bus across from a cute girl dressed in all black, wearing Converse sneakers, a red streak in her hair, nose ring. She's reading a book, and it's in Hebrew, and I'm so excited to see somebody who looks cool and secular like me reading a religious book, finding meaning in Jewish text. I'm so curious what she's reading. If it's the weekly Parsha or something Hasidic, it must be mystical. So I ask her confidently, excuse me, is that Kabbalah? Kabbalah? She responds, my book, lo, they 50 shades of gray. <laughs> and as she gets off at her stop, the woman next to me looks up from her book of Tehillim and warns me, in this country, everything, even the pornography, is in Hebrew. <laughs> I am 22, wandering through Nachlo in Jerusalem, looking through the windows for a Kabbalat Shabbat service I would feel comfortable in. I hear the faint echo of Lachado Di, and I excitedly follow the sound of the Psalms into a heavy steel door and down a staircase into an underground shul, disappointed to discover that the prayer is separated. Men in front, women tucked into a corner behind a curtain. I decide I will leave, but first I ask a group of women sitting, talking on a couch if there is a bathroom. They point. Is this men's or women's, I ask, confused as I watch a woman walk out of one stall and a man out of the next. It's both, one of the women says. This is Israel, you know. This shul is also in a bomb shelter. There's not so much space down here that we can just separate the bathrooms by gender. <laughs> I am 24, on a bus in Tel Aviv. It's Friday, January 3rd, early afternoon, only hours before Shabbos, the first Shabbos just after New Year's. The bus is crowded and slow, and I've been sitting silently for an hour across from an old Israeli man who reminds me of my grandfather. As my stop approaches, I want to say something, so I smile and say, Chag Sameach, and he responds, throwing his head back, Machag, what holiday? New Year's, I say. It's not my New Year's, he insists. I am a Jew. Taken aback, realizing I've offended him, I apologize. I'm sorry. Shabbat shalom, achi. And as I walk off the bus, I hear him yell after me, Ma Shabbat! Do I look religious to you? I am 26 teaching at a Jewish summer camp, standing in the back of the Beit Midrash as participants listen to a lesson plan we've improvised because war has broken out. I watch the Israelis in the room. I wonder if they'd like me less if they knew how liberal I was. In my head, I label the three murdered boys settlers, and I feel guilty for doing it. I'm already afraid for Gaza. 
In response to that thought, my father pleads, Andrew, you're too young to remember. My grandfather reminds me to never forget. Aunt Edna dismisses me. You don't know what it's really like to live here. I am a mistress at my lover's funeral, watching from afar as the family members cry by the casket. Who is he? They ask. Why should he cry? As I turn to wipe away a tear, I notice a book titled Moses the Outsider. Moses who felt voiceless, almost left forever. Mi anochi ki elech. Who am I? <laughs>